Ecocide is the idea for a new international crime, the fifth international crime, and it's about protecting our environment, which matters so much. Since 1945, there have been four international crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and the crime of aggression, waging a manifestly illegal war, what's happening right now in relation to Ukraine. They all focus on the protection of the human. The gap is an international crime that focuses on the protection of our environment, of our natural world. And that's the idea of ecocide, which has been around for about 50 years and which is now slowly making its way onto our statute books. I cannot begin to overstate the urgency which this planet faces, whether it's climate change or biodiversity or the quality of our drinking water, rivers and oceans. We face a series of crises. I have been involved in international environmental law since 1989. And over the years, I've hoped that the laws we've put in place would be sufficient to address these very real and present challenges. They are not. We need to go further and we need to go further fast. We need to criminalize acts which are an attaint on our well-being, on the well-being of our environment. That's why we need international criminal law, the crime, a new crime of ecocide, to basically hold individuals who are responsible for taking decisions that cause systematic, widespread, massive damage to our environment to hold them to account in a criminal court of law, including the International Criminal Court. This is a time of urgency. It's a time of need. And this is one of the ways forward. I'm not starry eyed about what simply putting a new crime on our statute books would do. But I recognize the criminal law has a unique ability to change consciousness, to change the way we think about uh, our lives, about our planet, about our well-being. And what the crime of ecocide does is it changes consciousness. It tells us for the first time that to damage the environment on a systematic and massive scale is a crime anywhere in the world. It is urgent. We need this now. So back in 1945, after the horrors of the Second World War, countries around the world came together and decided we'd have a new international system, indoctrinated into the United Nations Charter and the famous Nuremberg trial, was the idea of a rules-based system. And the central idea is that for the first time, we have rules of international law that limit what states can do, what sovereigns can do, what governments can do that give rights to the individual, that give rights to groups, that give rise to rights now, as we hope in the concept of ecocide, to rights for our natural world, for the protection of the environment. The rule of law signifies the idea that we live together, individually, collectively, under a rule not of power, not of might, not of force, but of rules and of courts the idea that we are subject to limits and constraints. And the rule of law is one of the ways we have to impose a new system of values, including the value of protecting our natural environment. International environmental law came into being in the late 1980s. I was present at the creation. That was a privilege and it was a responsibility. And to take forward the idea of the rule of law in relation to the protection of the environment we now need, I believe, passionately, a crime on ecocide to protect our natural world. In thinking about a rules-based system for the world, you've got to think about things at two levels. There is the national level, our national courts, our local courts, our local legal system and rules, and there is a principle of universal jurisdiction. It doesn't matter where the crime is committed. But any court, any country, any jurisdiction has the power to criminalize and to investigate and to prosecute wherever the crime occurs. And so it is with the idea of ecocide. We recognize that some countries 
have more developed legal systems than others, have better courts, have more independent judges. And what the crime of ecocide is intended to do is inscribe itself along the crimes of war crimes and crimes against humanity and genocide and recognize the principle that where a national legal system can't deliver, the international legal system will deliver and any court anywhere in the world should be able to exercise jurisdiction over an individual who commits one of these crimes. So the idea of universal jurisdiction is to fill a gap in the enforcement capacities at national levels. It's not a new idea, but it would be new in relation to the environment. You know, um, I've been involved in matters of the environment for more than three decades now. I'm passionately committed to a rules-based system to protect us. I can't I can't avoid telling you that I've never been more worried than I am right now. I'm a very avid gardener. I have a dry garden in France, a, a place which doesn't require much water, but a little bit of water. And over this past summer, we've experienced drought on a scale I have never seen before, which uh, has indicated, you know, in the most dramatic of ways, what it means for plants, for nature, for animals, for our well-being, when basic supplies like water are no longer available. So I'm convinced we face an incredible challenge and an incredible threat. But I'm also a sort of cup half full kind of person. I am an optimist. I do believe in the resilience of the human spirit. I do believe um, in our ability, um, even in the most dire of situations, uh, to pluck uh, success from disaster. And in that context, the rule of law has a very central place. You know, I go back to 1945. I go back to the horrors um, of the Second World War. And that was going on. Instead of laying down in a corner and weeping, individuals came up with new ideas. Two particular uh, individuals I'm thinking of that feature in a book I wrote called East West Street, a man called Herschel Outerpacht, a man called Raphael Lemkin. Instead of lying down and weeping in a corner when they learned that their entire families had been killed uh, and doing nothing, they decided they would put ideas into place and ideas into action. And the ideas that they had were to create, to invent the concepts of crimes against humanity and genocide. And they became part of our being and they changed our world. That is the way forward. And over the longer term, yes, I do feel optimistic that we can address these mighty challenges. And we have the responsibility to do that. We have the responsibility to do that for our younger generations and for all future generations. And we will do it. And we are committed to doing that. There's a lot that individuals and groups can do to help push along this idea of ecocide. You can get involved in the legal initiative. Join an NGO called Stop Ecocide, which is doing incredible work in galvanizing public opinion, governments and international organizations around the world. You can write to your parliamentarians. You can write to your president, to your king or your queen or your emperor or your prime minister or whoever it is exercises power in the place that you happen to live and say we support this idea it's slowly coming onto the statute books it's moving for example in places like belgium which has become the first country to take the definition that i've worked on and put it into domestic law and support it internationally you can go out on the streets when you hear that there is a march in support of the ecocide project join that march there is plenty that you can do. When you see people taking decisions that you don't like, authorizing the use of new oil or gas fields or destroying pristine forests uh, in your community or around the world, agitate, militate, write, protest, get involved in the legal initiatives. There's a huge amount that can do. Individuals really matter. Individuals can make a difference. Mm -hmm. 